It's nearly Christmas time, and it is looking to be one of the shittest Christmases on record since... Well, I mean, you know, some of the ones during World War II must have been pretty bad, but, you know, those aside, you know, we can't get our nails done, we can't go to the hairdressers, I mean, what is the point in living? It's an absolute nightmare. All joking aside, you know, it sucks that we can't see people, but... Hey, you know, would you rather see them over Christmas and then they'd be dead by New Year? What, what do we want? So, you know, um, I'm in one of the situations where I can't go home for Christmas because I live in Scotland and my family live in England and borders are a big thing right now, so that's fun. Um, so I thought, I'm not going to buy a whole Christmas cake for myself, so if only I could drink Christmas cake instead. Luckily, the guys at Warner's have got you covered. And I don't know why I said that like I'm sponsored by them, because I'm, I'm not. I bought this with my own money. I spent 30 quid on this bottle. It was supposed to be 35, but I think they were getting a bit panicky that it was a few days to Christmas. So my ploy for hanging on in there worked. I saved a full fight. Still quite a bit for a bottle of gin, isn't it? But when I read the ingredients list, I'm sure you'll agree, it's, it's a little bit exciting. This is a yearly release. They do this, well, I know they did it last year, so... Does that count as a tradition yet? They've probably done it a few other years as well. Um, but this one has caught my eye, not least because of the colour, and I was like, ooh, whiskey, and then I remembered that it's Jim. Um, but because, I mean, I'm gonna read a little bit of this out to you. Um, a Christmas cake gin, rich, syrupy, and festive spice with real chocolate, treacle, and fruit. 40% ABV, which we like. Um, and then there's a lot of, like, McGubbins on the, on the label here. It's a lovely copper sticker. Um, we know it was distilled by Lois, of, of all people, so um, Lois, I'll let you know what your handiwork is like. And then there's a story on the back, because Christmas is all about stories and tales and fables, isn't it? And, well, lies, often, but I mean, hey-ho. Um, <clears throat> Chocolate treacle and spice with the hint of Christmas magic. There's no glitter in this before anyone says anything. They're a bit above that kind of crap. Um, our exclusive 2020 vintage. Vintage. That makes it exclusive. Oh, they've also used the word exclusive. That'll be where the extra tenor came from. Made with 100% natural botanicals, including... Well, yeah, that's what botanicals are. You can't get artificial botanicals. That's not a thing. Anyway... Um, could you make gin out of bin bags? Maybe. Anyway, um, hand-picked slow berries from our annual slow swap, pure cherry juice and black treacle. Serve with cola and a slice of orange or be decadent and add to luxurious rich hot chocolate. Best shared with loved ones after dark. Well, bet they regret putting that on the bottle, but anyway. Um, now then, I could put this in a hot chocolate, but I'm not going to because I have greater plans for my hot chocolate. You get to meet my hot chocolate soon. It's not my hot chocolate, but we, we're going to have a talk about hot chocolate in another video coming along. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. How am I doing with those cheesy links? Not good? Great. Awesome. Cool. Um, I'm going to stick this in a glass and see what it's like neat, um, like a maniac. Um, neat gin's a thing. People do drink gin neat. Occasionally, um, rarely, admittedly, but put a good old Maswiggins in there. Oh, that's my phone going off. Lovely. We love it. Right. Oh, I need a better table arrangement than this. This is tricky. Okay, so in the glass, it's a it kind of look, it sort of reminds me of like an Oloroso wine. It's like a deep chestnut colour. It's a heavy smell, which either means I'm fine or I'm asymptomatic. Okay, uh, the juniper is the primary thing coming through, and there's lots of it. It's heavily perfumed with juniper. I'm getting like a little bit of a molasses-y thing. There's something a little bit sort of like a... Uh, like old vatted Demerara rum or something. It's a weird back note of it. I'm not too sure about the chocolate. I think the other notes are kind of overwhelming. I don't doubt that it's in there, because why would you put it on the bottle otherwise? But, yeah, in terms of in terms of the nose power, I'm not quite getting it. it smells nice, you know, quite fresh. Something else about it as well, I can't quite put my... Yes, yeah, sort of generic spice mix. I'm... 
Yeah, kind of like a dry spice mix that you might get in one of those like plastic tubs. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put this in my mouth now. There are some of you in the audience that never tire of me saying that things are thick. So, there you go. The chocolate does come through. Why am I surprised by that? But it does. Chocolate gin, that's strange. I've been there with chocolate gins before and they're a mixed bag if ever there was one. Um, loads of fruity components. It does kind of remind me a little bit of sherry, like an Oloroso kind of a thing. It's sweet, but there's also like, it's got a full body. It's quite herbal, herbaceous. There's a bit of the juniper coming through, not too much. I think the treacle is what's lending simultaneously a bit of bitterness and a bit of sweetness to it as well. So that's fun. Um, I'm going to put this bottle down here now because I don't have enough room to do everything. I need something else here. This was like a last minute improv thing. Uh, I originally had plans for like a little side table and then realised it was way too short. Uh, so this kind of stood in at the last second. We're going to dump some cola in this now, which I feel a bit weird about. Gin and cola apparently is a thing. Uh, in the Mediterranean. I've never tried it myself. Maybe I'll quite like it. Uh, and today's cola du jour is Alba Cola. This is their full fat version. Again, I'm into it. Um, you go with whatever cola you drink, if it's Pepsi, Coca-Cola, whatever. Got to go quite thin on the pour. Not because I'm scared, but because that's just generally how I mix spirits. I tend to go a bit heavy in the spirit to mix a ratio because I still want to taste the spirit. Um, the fashion with highballs at the minute is go light on the alcohol and just kind of drink mixer essentially with like just a tin, just a teensy little bit of alcohol to make you feel a little cheeky on a Tuesday night. I'm turning into Jake. Jesus, what's going on here? It's like an explosion of orange now, like orange flower water. The chocolate really comes through now. That's strange so it wasn't there at all before and i'm really getting like spices and like a, a figgy pudding kind of things like cherry chocolate spices yeah it, it smells like a spice shop Have you ever been into like you know a, a specialist food shop or something like that or um not herbalists but like what are they called whole food shops you know that smell they've got and you kind of go in and you're kind of like Smells kind of like cinnamon in a rabbit's hutch. It's that kind of a smell. I dig it though. So let's see what it's like with um, with a bit of a bit of cola in there. Hmm. Nowhere near as weird as I thought it was going to be. Actually. Do you know that's really nice. Actually. Um, it just kind of turns it into like a spice kind of a cola, almost. Um, do you know what? Do you know what? You could market that as Christmas pudding cola. And I know it's a Christmas cake gin before anyone says anything, but there's a lot of crossover, let's be bluntly honest with each other. It's just a slightly different cooking method, if nothing else, isn't it? The two marry together really well. The juniper takes a backseat to all the other additions to the gym. So you get the treacle, you get the spices, and the cola comes through as well. It's, it, it kind of freshens it up a little bit. It becomes a little bit mentholy. I dig it. I'm into it. How many last minute Christmas cancellations out of five would I give it? It's, you know, it's a hearty four. Unlike the subject itself. A little bit better. Uh, yeah, it's, it's lovely. Um, I also dig the bottle. It's beautiful. Can we just talk about the design there for a second? It's gorgeous, isn't it? This lovely wrap. They've got them on all of the Warner's bottles. They've they make fantastic gifts and they tend not to be too expensive as well, which is handy. Um, this one being a bit of an exception to the rule. They're not normally this steep. They're normally around about the 20, 25 pound mark. Um, it's delightful. It's spicy. It's festive. I'm looking forward to having it on my shelf. I think I'm going to miss it when it's gone. Uh. So that was Warner's Christmas cake gin. Let me know down below. What's your favourite dessert Christmas? Because I think it's fair to say most people loathe Christmas cake, don't they? They're just not fans. I, like, I do. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into a fruitcake. Um, <laughs> uh, should have thought that sentence through. 
Um, thumb the video if you enjoyed it, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. Mm -hmm.